Thanks for joining us in the Green Room from the Heritage Foundation. I'm Rob Bluey, and today we're joined by Governor Mitch Daniels of Indiana. Governor, thanks for joining us today. Fun to be here, Rob. Governor Daniels, you're the author of a new book, Keeping the Republic. Let me ask a question that's on everybody's mind. If you were offered the vice presidency, would you accept? Everybody's mind? <laughs> we got more important things to think about, Rob. No, I mean, I, I don't have an answer for this question as often as it comes up these days. I, uh, uh, this book is, is really my attempt to have, offer a few constructive thoughts um, uh, as opposed to being a candidate for anything. And uh, uh, that and 15 more months of working hard for the citizens of Indiana is all uh, on my plate. On your first day in office, you decertified all government public employee unions. Now, we've seen similar debates over public sector unions in Wisconsin and Ohio. How were you able to accomplish this without the kind of controversy we've seen in those other states? I think in part because I was able to move quickly. There had never been a statute in our, uh, passed by our legislature that legitimized uh, this uh, arrangement of compulsory dues and so-called collective bargaining. It had been uh, done, by the, as in many other states, by the stroke of a governor's pen 16 years before. So I simply chose not to continue it. And um, it, it, two thing, only two things really happened. Uh, I, was, I was prepared for a great uh, protest, but there really wasn't one. Uh, the only two things that happened were within a few months, 90 plus percent of the state employees quit paying the dues once it was their free choice. The other thing that happened, and I think it's important to add, is that freed from 160 pages of thou shalt and thou shalt nots, we were able to really go to work restructuring and transforming agency after agency after agency, trying to build a culture of performance in Indiana state government. We pay people now more if they do a good job and, and no raises if they don't. Um, and um, I, I think as much as anything, that's been the most important result is, yeah, we're saving money, but we're getting much more effective government than we had before, and I'm, I'm glad I did it. Now, earlier this year, Democrats walked out of the state legislature. What lessons did you learn from that experience? Patience, bite your tongue, keep your sense of humor, um, which, none of which was easy on, from one day to the next. But in the end, uh, they, they did come back, I think, in large part because the public, uh, my fellow citizens over and over would say to me, if I did that at my job, I'd be out on my ear the next day. And I think that message finally got through to our Democratic friends. So uh, it, by the time the legislature was over, we had accomplished all those things we set out to do. It was an extraordinarily successful session and, and uh, fortunately, uh, important reforms in education, another balanced budget, and, and uh, other progress in our state was not uh, frustrated. Now, the Wall Street Journal has called this the year of school choice for reforms that are happening all across the country, led in part by Indiana. What, is the reform, what are the reforms that you've put in place and what do they mean for parents and students? Well, um, we really shot the moon in terms of, of uh, education reform this year. And it, so it covered the gamut from freeing principals and superintendents to run the schools. And of course, we're going to hold them accountable. Uh, but that meant uh, limiting collective bargaining uh, to just wages and benefits. Uh, second, uh, teacher accountability. We're going to pay the best teachers more. We're going to uh, protect them more. Your, your tenure will be based on did the kids learn, not how many years have you been at this. But then uh, specifically with regard to uh, choice, we'll have many more charter schools soon in our state. We already had uh, created uh, complete tuition free public school choice, that is for a child to go from district to district without being charged any extra. And now we have a universal um, voucher program which uh, says that uh, lower and moderate income families uh, will be allowed to direct uh, the uh, dollars we'd otherwise spend, or most of them, to, the, to a non-government school if that's their preference. Now, according to a new Manhattan Institute poll, 77% of Indiana residents rate their government as effective, yeah. efficient. How or what can the federal government learn from what you're doing in Indiana? Well, uh, first let me say that uh, I just did learn this information just within the last few days. It's enormously gratifying to those of us who've worked hard to change Indiana government. We, we've said for years, we're going to make government smaller. We have the fewest state employees since 1976 in our state. We have a lower state payroll, salary, uh, wages plus benefits 
in nominal dollars, not adjusted, than the state did when we got there seven years ago. So we believe in keeping government within its proper limits, but inside those limits, we, we really worked hard to make government work really well. And so to learn that uh, more than any other state that they surveyed, uh, Hoosiers believe that the government is delivering for them, I think is real important and uh, uh, really the best news I've had in quite a while.